Hello, and in today's episode we will be launching this probe or into the orbit around Ike. Technically we won't be launching, we will be ejecting it from the Kerbin, it has already been launched in one of our previous episodes, we'll do the transfer, we're gonna arrive at Duna and we're gonna deploy it in Ike uh, orbit. However, here we are playing with the remote tech, so that means all the flight stuff needs to be done by the flight computer. I'm also making sure that I'm logging all of the orbital telescope uh, observations because we didn't have place to put it on our previous probe. So there's going to be a lot of these experiments that are being done. There we go. <clears throat> our burn will be in 50 minutes and 10 seconds. I'm, I have queued it up into my flight computer, which will be performing pretty much all of the uh, maneuvers that we have. And that leaves us the chance to just enjoy. I'm also accelerating time warp when I get a chance to get some cool... Okay, okay, space just above curb and shores, there we go. I'm just making sure that I'm spamming a little bit of science as much as I can, because we will need a lot of science. We are going interplanetary. So yeah, we want to unlock a lot of technologies so we can get a lot of cool stuff. Orbital, okay, there we go, transmitting. And the burn will be in 37 minutes. So I'm now flying over land, which means there's always a potential that there's a biome I have missed with this uh, experiment. Oh, there was it. Kerbin's Deserts. Okay, that's the stuff. Cool. So the burn is being in 33 minutes. Everything is nominal. I'm just going careful to see if there's anything else I could. Kerbin's Shores, yeah, that's a biome that needs also to be sent data from. The total burn will be 1062.5 meters and that's fine, so we are getting ready to perform the ejection burn. Alright, and... There we go, getting ready. Everything is queued up in the flight computer, so we don't really need to do anything. The flight computer will be taking care of everything for us. And there it goes, ignition. Beautiful, isn't it? All right. So the burn was around 1000 meters per second, just making sure that we eject in the right way. And good. So, by this time, the first craft, which is, was our crew that we saw in the previous episode, was already on its way. It has ejected and uh, it was actually leaving the Kerbin Sphere of Influence. Now, that being said, let us go and check the Duna, how it looks like. So, we need to actually do some tweaking. Like I said, KSP2 misses this feature. The ability to have this maneuver planner that we are doing here at the bottom and we need to fiddle it until we get a good and very, very practical Duna encounter. That's something that devs, if you're watching this, please implement. All right, Duna periapsis, Duna periapsis. We're trying to get it as low as possible. Yeah, 46, okay, that's a little bit too aggressive, I would say. I mean, it's always something that I can fix later, so it's not really a big deal. 196, 33, okay, yeah, 130, okay, that's enough. So we're gonna be putting course correction, which is gonna be happening in 203 days. So spamming more science observations and let us enjoy the departure of Kerbin. Of course, we're sending a lot of, well, gravity scan. Apparently I've missed one or two when I was sending the craft, so there we go. Beautiful. Gravity scan again. All right. Like I said, this probe is packed with science, so definitely every little now and then I get like bloop, which means more science to collect. All right. So the next thing is going to be happening. We will be executing the plan maneuver, which is the maneuver to get aligned with Duna, so just be careful here. The burn time will be 23 seconds because I have significantly reduced the thrust on the main ship, just to make sure that we don't overshoot it. All right. 
let's see how well it will execute. Note that this time I'm not burning, the flight computer is. Alright, 40 seconds, let's see how well accurate it will be. Come on flight computer, make me proud. Yeah, I think I have set it to be sensitive enough so that we can get a very nice encounter. Good. I'm overall happy with this. So now we have queued the arrival to the Duna Sphere of Influence, which should be the next order of business. I'm just trying to find where Duna is at the moment, and soon enough we will be arriving there. Okay, and changing the Sphere of Influence. Gtunk and my science alert telling me that telemetry report should be sent and orbital telescope observation should definitely be sent. Now, at this point, I'm actually even thinking, look, I don't want to do anything at Duna, I want to do things at Ike. So I'm actually going to queue up the maneuver to get us basically in the orbit around Ike. Duna will just do a flyby and then we go to Ike. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. Thrust limiter is 3.5, which means the burn time will be significantly longer. Uh, yeah, all right. Fair enough, uh, there we go. Let's just make sure that we queue up everything. All right, so the burn will be in 27 days and it's gonna take 27 seconds. Remember, this is in the orbit of Ike. So, yeah, I'm just hitting a little bit of this time acceleration. We're closing Aduna. For some reason, my visual enhancements stopped working at this point, which means Duna was back to its red bland self without this glow. For some reason, um, completely unbeknown to me. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> sometimes these things happen. Does happen if you run with mods. If it was stuck, hopefully it wouldn't happen. But then again, you saw what happened, I mean, in KSP2. Matt Lowne managed to successfully launch the KSC into the orbit of Kerbin. Yeah, I know. Crazy, isn't it? Okay, look at this go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Duna has its glow still, but uh, I guess the texture was a little bit off. I'm just making sure that if I see some signs that I'm spamming it. Okay. And the next thing that is going to happen in 3 hours and 40 minutes, we're going to be executing this. Do not... Yeah. All right. So there we go. Soon enough, we will be doing the burn. And the moment we arrive around Ike, which I believe we are there at the moment. Okay. We will be executing maneuver in 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Which reminds me, we need to do science. Telemetry report, probe, gravity scan, beautiful. We collected all of these experiments and then we're gonna be performing the burn. Once we do the burn, we will be permanently or inserted into the orbit of Ike. And I'm actually thinking I'm gonna be keeping that probe there, so why not? I'll have plenty of probes that will be, you know, circling around Duna, like buzzards, so there's no point why some of them shouldn't be, one of them shouldn't be at Ike, at least. Okay, telemetry report, let's see, can we send some of this data? I mean, right now it's actually becoming harder because I have to manually queue all those up, and then I will need to be able to send them, so hopefully we have now connection to the KSC, who knows if we'll have connections once we basically get when this executes. So let's see what it will say. I am making sure that I queue up everything. So let's see, review data, review telemetry. There we go, some being sent. Let's send this. Let's send this. I'm just monitoring my electric charge so it doesn't drop to a too low of a level. All right, time for the glory shot. Let's do a circle around Ike and then we will be ready for the burn exactly there. So there we go, sending some data as well. Performing, queuing experiments. Actually, it's the correct word, not performing. 
override the existing gravity scan. The instrument is only suitable to be used from orbit. Okay, we are back into the connectivity. Just checking out if any experiments more pop up. No, let's review the data then at least. Yeah, and we were out of electric charge. So we are gonna review the data and what we can, we will send. There we go. See, when you're playing with the remote tech, you have limitations, signal strength, connectivity, and battery. Without the battery, you can do jack. All right. See, now, not enough charge. We cannot transmit unless we have enough charge. So I need to let it actually recharge a bit, and then I will be sending the rest of the things. Okay, transmitting. Log, log, which means if if it says log, that means that I have, I can repeat the experiment, perhaps, hopefully. Nothing here. Ah, there's something. Send. Anything else? So. Next boss, I will be doing the circularization per burn. And that will hopefully wrap it up because then we will be on a nice Kerbin, oh sorry, Kerbin hike, low orbit. Where it's the place where I think this probe should actually have its, you know, I'm not gonna say final resting place, you never know what we're gonna do with it, but still, <laughs> it's gonna have its uh, place temporarily in the low hike orbit. 108 meters per second burn. There we go. Okay, so what I think now, I'm gonna turn off the computer, I'm gonna be toggling the action group SAS, and I'm even thinking maybe I should disable the... I'm gonna review the data from the orbital telescope and the gravity. I'm gonna send that, and I'm gonna send that. Any more science we could theoretically send? Yeah. Let's do this. So yeah, orbital and gravioli is, uh, orbital telescope and gravioli is the hog for science. So you can actually grab a lot of science there too. All right, but that actually wraps it up when in terms of this probe, we're just gonna call it Arc Probe and we're gonna keep it there.